Welcome to the Startup Grind. Thanks for coming, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, also, thanks to our sponsors, uh, Slack, Telecom, Decent, and O100 Campus for supporting this concept, and also Binarium for providing this awesome space. So thanks. Uh, yeah, so before we start, Slido. Uh, if you guys want to ask any questions, feel free to ask anytime during our conversation. We'll try to answer them as we go, but uh, mainly at the end of uh, the interview. So just uh, click slido.com and uh, use hashtag SUGBA. Okay, so without uh, further ado, please let me uh, introduce you our today's guest. It's uh, founder and president of Anasoft, one of the most progressing IT companies in Slovakia, Michal Hrabovec. Please give a round of applause for me. So Michal, let's start with the first set of questions. Um, why don't you tell us a bit more about you growing up, uh, your uh, early days, and also uh, your university studies afterwards? All right. Um, so um, I was born in '71, in the year '71. So probably most of you are younger than me. And um, for the time, it was a deep socialist country. I was a uh, year of 16 years old when I tried to um, get the first money from the IT. So I, um, it was my passion. IT was programming for the time the very old computers with the name of PE01 or something. But it makes more heating than uh, computing power. So uh, I was teaching IT with adults for the years. Besides that, I was programming a lot. And um, I remember that when I was 17, I made a program that was uh, some teaching program for 3D objects uh, for the time, it was quite unique and uh, there was competition with such a work for students, so I, uh, I was going to Czechoslovak, the most, you know, uh, not the most funny guy, but the most successful. So uh, this was my early years, and then I came here, so I grew up here, here in the student's uh, place. Uh, and I was living in, in a student's house in Mladost, so it's a few one kilometers from here. And so I came here in year 89, and as you know well, the, the revolution comes, so I was in the first class. And, um, it was a great time, and when I was in the second year of university, um, I established my first company in Lausanne. So uh, I was 19 years old, and the, the guys I, uh, that uh, joined me was my friends from my university. So we had the same passion for IT, we had the same skills, more or less. So the company came crap. Because what I learned from the time was that uh, if uh, six people, like we were six people, um, came together with the same skills, but it can work. It's not a full uh, puzzle of, of skills you need to establish a successful company. So after two years, the company went crap, and uh, I established it again when I was in the fourth year of university here, I established uh, Anasov again, and Anasov is still the same Anasov for 26 years. It's quite a long time, and uh, the very beginning was like this. 
Do you remember the first customer that you sold services to, or perhaps was it a product that you guys started to build right away? Right. Um, 26 or 7 years ago, there was nothing in IT, more or less. So, first of all, a lot of customers want to uh, bring a paper agenda and accounting to, to the computer. So, one of the first customers were the property management company the old uh, city of Bratislava. Then, because we, we did the program for them, we tried to find another property management companies uh, bigger the, the better. So we found uh, one in Nitra, which is a city, uh, one hour drive from here. Uh, and they manage oh, like 20,000 20,000 uh, flat, which is quite, quite a nice number. So um, we then tried to catch more customers and we were quite successful with that. And then we also uh, fight for the biggest one, which is the property management company, the Falca, here in the city. And they manage more than 20,000 flats and so on and so on. So we then bring the product on the market. Uh, and now today, we manage more than half a million flats here in Czech Republic and also uh, all uh, payments and money goes to our service, so it's still working. So we are the, the largest company here in property management. But you also have different products, right? So what is the kind of process that you go through when you are deciding whether to build the product or not? Um, well, this is a quite important question because after 26 years um, I saw a lot of uh, products growing and also falling and the important question is how we can manage also falling the products because the falling or, or, or to close up the product line is much more difficult than to grow it up. Um, for example, we, we had a product maybe 12 years ago, it was the largest um, accounting for telephone calls, telephone billing product. Uh, and we had like 400 customers here in Israel, and we earned more than 12 million crowns for that. But then the situation became complicated because the mobile operators uh, came and uh, internet calls and so on and so on, so we closed up the product. Um, and we try to do this not to lose much money, but uh, it's not easy. So, but is that not the answer for the question? If you are asking how, so what decision has to be made to, to bring a new product line, right? So, um, okay, we are trying. We are trying to find out. Uh, I will start from another point. Typically, there's somebody, let's call him innovator, in a very different segment, who has an idea. Uh, we are trying to, to be known as a company that the innovator from different segment will come and discuss the idea with us. Can we make a product for that? But somebody has to be the first one on the market who who is trying to do something that, is, that doesn't exist yet. And some, uh, sometimes it's a very crazy idea, and our evaluation process is saying it's stupid. It can work, we don't believe that. Sometimes we believe that and we are trying to, to do that. It's still not a product. We are saying if you don't have at least five customers, it's not a product. So uh, the first one is fine, but it's still a project. Then we are trying to find out more. And if we find more, then it's still a project. But uh, if we realize that we can bring the, the same projects on the same base and bring the product that all customers we serve are the same equal uh, processes, then we are trying to make a product. And that's the product really became in life. 
So currently you have four core products being uh, sold within your operations. Do you have any other products uh, in pipeline that you plan on to right. bring to life? Um, well, um, it's very different. Let's say, for example, we have a customer which is the, the biggest uh, sugar company here uh, based in Austria and it's called Agrana Group. And, and then they got these sugar plants and um, we bring the uh, logistic optimization software for them, which is very special and we uh, directly control the fleet of uh, machines and also the tracks in the field. But it's so innovative that the competition doesn't exist. And sometimes that means that the market doesn't exist. The competition doesn't exist, the market doesn't exist. So we have a product, but it's very difficult to sell it because the companies are not ready for it. So every sugar company, at least in Europe, uh, already are in touch with Amazon somehow but it's too early. So the question is, do we have the product or not? Yes, we have done the product and it's one client running. The one client means that it's running in, in three countries, all uh, in four plants by now, but uh, it's not the product. So how, how did you manage to come across this kind of challenge in the past? If you've ever come across the situation that you already had something that was unique and you were, we, you, you believe that you actually have something great, but then there were still not enough customers and consider it product. Right. So, uh, yeah, we are trying to educate the, cust the potential customers uh, somehow, trying to, for example, to write an articles in international magazines about what's uh, edit value can bring to them. Um, for example, uh, based on the article, uh, a few months ago came a new client from France, also a big uh, company with a lot of sugar plants, and they asked for the pilot project for them. So we got a new customer in France. Uh, and luckily, we are still looking for the competition, and we found one in Australia. So maybe the market <laughs> growing because one other company in the other side of the world made the same system so maybe it's uh, slowly waking up mm -hmm. we are waiting we are trying to just uh, educate the market yeah. so you're also uh, well present in uh, in abroad do you remember when was the first move abroad kind of scaling with your products do you remember the whole process of uh, actually moving abroad. Um, 20 years ago I was traveling a lot. Uh, I was traveling uh, in Europe and, and in the US also. What I was doing, uh, I was trying to find out the new partners. And so I saw that the best way how to do it is to try to contact other Slovak people who lived in, uh, in different countries and who work in IT and entrepreneurs in IT. Um, so uh, I found some of them, and, and we started to make projects for them in Germany, in the United States, and so on. Um, but uh, strategically, then, what Amazon is trying to do is to bring the products on the market, not the projects, because you can't scale the projects. So. Uh, what we are trying to do is, okay, we've got uh, companies abroad with, with these people for whom we made projects. And we are trying to find out the space for our products. It's a very different, very different story. And it's not easy. Because what we have to do, what the challenge is, is to change their thinking. Because they are also project companies. It's very similar to us. Remake them to make them other product companies. So, how different is to deal with customers here in Slovakia or in the region versus in the US or somewhere more further away? Well, uh, that's 
several different point of view. Uh, first of all, if uh, a lot of people can uh, easily recognize us here in a small country, and uh, definitely uh, in the world we are nobody. So uh, as a point, we, um, we have a very different approach in uh, other countries. Uh, and also the culture. So uh, the culture is very different and we are trying to, to use the local people to do a business. It's very difficult for local people to do business abroad um, because of the culture reason. A lot of people doesn't believe that it exists, but I can assure you that there is. Uh, imagine the Czech Republic. We have a company in Czech Republic, and as I uh, told already, one of the products that is a property management system, we also uh, sell in Czech Republic. So the two companies cooperate on, on the development of the product. It means that um, some part of, of, the, of the product is made in Czech Republic and then translated the, the Slovak uh, expressions to Czech and, and so on, uh, we are translating them. There is very different. If a slow customer will find somebody menu that say the Czech expression, nothing really happened. If the Czech customer will find something Slovak in the menu, it's very angry. Right. So uh, there is a difference. And um, I think the, uh, if I'm trying to explain to, to my colleagues that uh, imagine that we are cooperating with some company from the eastern part of Russia, for example. We will be happy if there is some Ukraine expression in, in, uh, in software, not at all. So uh, it will be angry if there is German expression, we are not angry. But you are angry with the Ukrainian expression. So it's maybe very similar. Yeah. Okay. So where was it hardest to sell your products? Where? Where? Also sold something in Jamaica, right? Right, in Jamaica, yeah. It was the National Bank of Jamaica who is using the software from Anasoft for calculating the exchange rate for Jamaican dollar. And, but it was sold from US. So uh, Jamaica people probably they don't know where Slovakia is, and uh, because the uh, Americans sold software to Jamaica, they trust the American company. For from this side, it was an American company. But uh, maybe one of the hardest things is to sell uh, software to Germany, especially in the field of manufacturing, because they feel that they are the, the number one in, in the world in manufacturing. So they can't imagine that some company from Eastern part of Europe can have a better or useful software for them. Um, so that's very different. Did you sell everything in Germany? Right. Uh, through this German company, <laughs> through our German company, who we are, for example, our software is using the biggest truck uh, producer, Schmitz uh, Cargo Bull. Um, so, yeah, but also. It was an effort, right? right? It was a hard effort. Very hard. <laughs> but uh, we, as I, as I told, yeah. we try to mask that. And then it's a funny story. They, if they see the German business card and the German guy who is selling the software, everything is fine, uh, including that uh, the company, that the software is coming from Slovakia is still fine. Uh, and then the funny thing is that the, the mandate rate for projects based on the software, they ask for the Slovak mandate rate. So, yeah, right, they saw a, a German business card, but they want to have the price on Slacky. So, yeah, it's difficult sometimes to explain our German colleagues that, okay, guys, uh, we are very sorry for that, but you have nothing to do because you are too expensive. Yeah. So, so, let's move forward to, to your position within Anasoft. So, I assume you position yourself more as a leader than manager. What do you think are the 
required skills that every leader and every manager should possess within a successful company, from your point of view? Uh, well, I'm, I'm trying to explain it in a way that, uh, and it also is like a joke, but the, the leaders know where, but don't know how. The managers know how, but don't know where they should go. So uh, my position is to, to show the way. Where are we going? The manager is the CEO of the company. Uh, he manages everything, everything inside the company. Um, by the way, uh, back to your very first question, uh, this is uh, the guy who is the CEO of the company, the CEO of the company, my partner for, for the from the time we founded the, the new Anasoft, let's say, in 1993. He was the boss of the students' club here in Elam. The Elam club, probably, some of you. Uh, he is the manager. He knows how to manage people, how to motivate, how to take care about very detailed things, and so on and so on. I don't. I'm not the manager. Do you think leaders are bored? Yes and no, uh, and uh, I, I like just to mention that uh, leader, the leader is not more than the manager, from my point of view. Uh, because the question, things like, ah, can you be the top, can you be the leader? And I, I think that the leader is not the top. Uh, maybe, from my point of view, somebody is uh, born or get the talent to be a professional, for example, IT guy, somebody else could be professional manager and something. somebody can be a leader. Well, the skills for a leader, I think, uh, is very necessary is to see the things from above, from a very wide range of things, and to understand how they, uh, how they are related to each other make the right decision. So to see where the world is going and to see the role of this company inside. Managers, they usually have to go very deep into details to understand how the machine, how the company can be perfectly running. They don't need to see from a very wide range of Let's talk about your different project that you started some time ago, Babet Koeska, which is a, I did some research, so I know, but uh, it's a pretty interesting project. You started it, uh, when was it, 15 years ago? Last? Uh, 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 me, 15 years ago. <laughs> so it started when you had kids, right? Oh, right. When I mean, yeah, right. So, so if you can just introduce... Yeah, I got the kids, I saw the kids, project and I saw nothing on the internet about the kids. So uh, I met with my friends uh, who were in the same position and I told them the, the vision that, okay, let's, uh, let's try to, to build up a, a portal for the young families with the content. Uh, we can bring the technology and you can bring the content. And, and so we built up the largest uh, media portal for young families for the time. Um, and, and it was fine. You know, number one of the market is to be fine, but then you have to understand how the media market is, where is it moving, and um, because uh, it's obvious that the market, uh, every market is consolidating somehow, and uh, we saw that uh, we need to join somebody stronger than we are because we started to lose the position on the market. So what's your involvement in the project now? Are you on the leader's position as well? Uh, no, well, as the owner, as the co-owner, uh, maybe a little technology provider, um, for sure. But um, it's a different story. We can, if you want, we can talk about what media market is, where, where is it going, and what I think, where is it going. Yeah, feel where, free. Uh, yeah. Well, we well, have two hours time for, for that. I mean, we have to talk about the workers paying uh, micropayments for the content, 
or the advertising, where is it going, and so on and so on. There's a lot of things to... to Let me just name a couple of challenges of, of the project uh, that you need to come the, across. The biggest challenge is this one, that people will not read long articles anymore. The people uh, more and more just eating short, very short, and sometimes uh, also wrong content, um, and it's very difficult to, to bring uh, quality content to the people because they, they are not very interesting anymore. They just need to have a very short messages, uh, and even they are in troubles, they are still are looking for short answers. For example, if they got a sick uh, child, they just need to have uh, quick answers. They are not going to read long articles about the, the illness and so on and so on. They should. But we can't do anything. So this is the biggest challenge for the new next, next generation. Um, yeah. How they will find and, and understand the content, which is my yeah. Uh, let's move forward with uh, kind of zoom out from your uh, daily operations and involvement and let's talk about the position or profile of Anasoft. I know that uh, Anasoft is well known for helping uh, to foster young talent. You guys do a lot of uh, different activities through which you try to support young people and somehow get them on the right track. So. If you can talk a bit more about why you do it and what are all the activities you guys are involved in actually helping young people to develop their skills and, and skills. Well, uh, yeah, well, that's a lot of things, you're you right. So uh, I will not remember all of them. I'm trying to bring the culture in the company that we are helping uh, young people to grow. So I don't know about everything. Um, we bring some initiatives, start, start up some uh, non-profit organizations. One of my favorite is the First Lego League. The First Lego League is a competition for young people between 10 and 16 years old with Lego robots. Uh, and the beautiful thing about it that it's worldwide. So the best teams from Slovakia can then uh, compete in, in the European level and then on the worldwide level, and after uh, 10 years, we helped uh, last year, it was 94 teams in Slovakia, 94 teams, so that means uh, 700 young people, and one of the team were very successful on the worldwide level, so we are proud of them. Um, and it's because the base is growing. So I believe that not only to take care about the best of, uh, of the best, but also to take care, take care about uh, many of talented people all around Slovakia will then bring the success on the top of the pyramid uh, because they see the others, they can inspire and challenge each other, and they can then uh, see that they are they can com compete and compare themselves to the best from the world. Okay, we've we got a different initiative. We, we do a lot of things with Julia Achievement, yeah. uh, which is the organization based, uh, established by, by Bacha. <laughs> uh, also, uh, we are trying to help our own kids. So we have a summer internship for the young people from our employees. Here, thank you for being here. Also, to see you uh, and uh, 100 space. So it was like uh, 15 young people. Uh, and so on. I mean, we are trying to give the, the mm -hmm. something, a piece of us to the yeah. young generation. So you've been doing this difference in mindset of these people, kind of observing throughout the time, let's say, you know, 
15 years ago versus now. Also, if maybe you can relate with the youngsters coming to your company as fresh graduates. Do you see some big differences or it's well, quite yeah, simple? Yeah, I see. I see that very different is that the young people now often had the opportunity to travel abroad. So they saw how it looks like abroad in this country. 15 years ago, it's not, it's not so obvious. Um, they just uh, dream about the countries outside the Slovakia and uh, they believe it's a better world outside. And maybe they believe they, they can be rich without any effort. So it's very different now. The young people, they saw the country abroad, the but they know they have to put a lot of energy into be successful and that the people abroad are not smarter than we are here. And I believe the next generation will bring a lot of good things here. This relates to young entrepreneurs being part of the entrepreneurial system here. What's your take on our startup community uh, here in Slovakia? What are the, the biggest challenges and perhaps what are the strengths that we should build on in order to prosper and, uh, and build next multi-billion dollar companies? Um, well, this is a difficult one. Um, what I see is this, uh, uh, the first, I had a passion for IT. Then, for what they are passionate for. They, they, they saw other successful stories and they just uh, came to the startup space and believed that they can establish the company and be successful and that they don't know what, to, what they want to do. Uh, so the, the biggest challenge is the, to, to show the young people that the first of all they need to have a passion for something and also the skills for something. Passion is not enough. So, and to go for, go for it. So to, to, study a lot and so on. Then they, they can be successful. Uh, let's talk about your fuck-ups. Uh, what were there, if any, and uh, what did you learn from the journey? Um, well, uh, I think definitely the biggest was, uh, was this one, that I, um, I worked too much. Uh, the work-life balance is, is not a funny thing. It's not, it is a very important thing. And uh, because of that, I, I got the problems with my health for, for some years, a few years. And it was very difficult for me to, uh, to become, uh, get out of, out of it again. So to take care of uh, myself, about the work life balance, about the sport, and, and, the work and so on. So, uh, yeah. I, I, I couldn't believe it before how I know exactly what it's all about. So, if you were to do something different that time, what would you do differently? You would perhaps spend more time with family, take care of yourself more, have the working hours, cut working on weekends, or what would, what would it be? Right. Uh, I think I tried. Uh, I was enough uh, with my family, I think. Um, but it was only work and family, nothing else. Um, but you can grow, I think you can grow healthy if you don't have any other uh, things that you are passionate of. So, uh, and then later I read an article that was a, a nice one that, that we're talking that the most great leaders and managers. Uh, Usually they are great in more than one thing. Uh, so uh, I was asking myself, what was the, the when I was young, was passion for me also. I was not sitting all the time in, in the table when I was uh, 16 years old. Uh, I was biking like seven times per week you know, in a club, in a sports club, and then also. Uh, 
I, I did a lot of different things and, and, I, and I played music. So that's also something I forget to do. But now I'm playing again. I'm playing saxophone actually uh, in a music uh, group. So uh, that's something that filled me from inside, a different point of view. Um, if you were to give some advice to starting a tipper here, perhaps people that are going to be watching online, what would it be? Yeah, maybe I already said it, that the first is passion and skill. Then will be the entrepreneurship, not the opposite way. So, so my advice is to look for your own passion and if you can get the skills that, that are one of the top and then Everything else we will bring. Just go for it, and you will uh, learn on the journey how to be entrepreneur. It's not that difficult. Great. Thank you, Michal. Uh, let's move forward to our Slido questions. Uh, the first one. Ah, that's the correct one. What is the valuation of Anasoft? Right. Uh, this is a nice question. Um, I. Uh, <laughs> right. The valuation of Panasonic is not very high because uh, it could be much higher. It, it, uh, the much higher valuation we can get if we split the company because the market that we are operating uh, can evaluate the product with much higher price. For example, I take the, as an example the product for property management. If we go uh, I don't think that the buyer, the potential buyer, will evaluate every product that we have on the highest price we can get from the buyers who are in special segments that we are operating with products. So uh, we split the products that way. It's definitely, we are counting the tens of millions of euros. Definitely. Uh, Anastro got uh, four companies now, and the Slovak one is making uh, uh, We should do some Okay, talk about this uh, with a beer in my hand <laughs> later on. I will tell you the, the story that uh, uh, but, but I get the point. You got the point, maybe. We have four different areas that are Together, it doesn't make sense to sell. We have to bring the valuation for every area separately. And then the, the price will be much higher. Uh, for example, the property management system uh, can be valuable for the company who operates in property management or for the company who operates in uh, uh, measurements, for example. We have more than half a million sites in our portfolio. So you can imagine that it's more than five million uh, measurement points. So everybody's talking about internet things now. We have this uh, measurement by internet. So we are talking about more than five million measurements uh, points, uh, it can, which can bring data every day or every ten minutes. If you want consumption for your heating and water and everything inside the flat. So uh, I can imagine that some, some companies can be very interesting about it. It's much more interesting uh, than uh, if we are selling out of as a software company. Because a software company doesn't make it. Great. And another question. How would you suggest a smaller Slovak outsourcing company less than 25 people to gain more clients in the US? Um, first of all, we, we cancel doing this 12 years ago. So uh, this is typically the, the projects, the, the project strategy. Uh, I, I can't see any reason to make projects for another country if we can do a product. So, uh, how would you suggest a small outsourcing company to gain more clients? So don't gain more clients in the US. Try to bring 
more scalable product to them, something that you can scale. Because what will do if you gain more clients in US, then you will need more people. But you can't get more people because uh, then you will hire the price for the people. If you hire the price for, for the people, then you can't gain easily more clients. It's not a scalable sales model. All right, thanks. Uh, is it hard to find uh, and train junior developers? Um, I don't think it is um, hard, but uh, what we do, we have a, a laboratory uh, in Anasoft uh, every year bringing three, four, five topics that the students can work on with us. There's a research topic, for example, 3D uh, movie recognition in real time, or security topics, or so on and so on. Through that, we found a lot of perfect, uh, skilled uh, junior de developers, how to train them. We are not in position to train them. We are bringing a lot of uh, trainings, but uh, usually the developers are developers by heart. It's a skill that uh, has something to do with uh, mathematics and with uh, algorithmical thinking and not to know the programming language. So, yeah, we can teach them to, to uh, about new language or framework or something, but we, we can make them better in something that is deep inside and can be hard work to think. So when you hire new people, especially uh, the youngsters, do you look for diplomas from university or it's not really a uh, value for you? Usually they work with us in this uh, laboratory. So this is the best way to be found in most useful and also the, for, for the young people is the best way because they got some money for it. It's a research project. It's very interesting usually. They see the company from inside uh, and it's, and it's um, not very... Uh, if they fail, nothing happened. They are, they are not working for customers. It's a research project. Yeah. So they can see the company from inside and if we like them and then if they like also us, and usually they are staying in company. But do they need to have the university diploma in order to actually get accepted? No. Definitely not. We are not asking. I believe we are not asking. I'm not the HR, but I we are not asking. Uh, as far as I know, the, uh, the people will have uh, several uh, discussions with the top technological leaders. And if they succeed, then they, can, they get the offer, but uh, I don't believe really we ask for any kind of certificates or diplomas yeah. from different institutions we don't have. Yeah. Let's move forward. What is an average salary of a developer in Breslau? I have no idea. <laughs> we should probably. We should do it. Um, well, maybe as far as I know, we look at the CEO with other guy and then he's and then it's HR and so on and so on. And it's very difficult uh, and average. <laughs> uh, who to count? Who to count to average? I mean, also the student, the young girl, or, well, and maybe also who is the developer. We've got different positions. Some of them are analytical, some of them are architects. Are, they, are the architects also developer? Should we move it to a peer discussion? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I, I can't help with this one. Okay, let's move forward. Which channels do you find customers through for products and for outsourcing? <laughs> well, we are not uh, looking for customers for, uh, for outsourcing. Uh, we are trying to find uh, customers through uh, partners. That's what we do, and we um, channel. So uh, we are trying to use partners' channels. So we have 
the most uh, global product is Signatus, the e-signature solution. Um, we have partners from Brazil to uh, Turkey, for example, is a, a very fast-growing market. And my colleagues uh, are trying to find the best partners for us who then win the, the projects in their local territory. So that's the channel, partners channel. That is, you know, that's for sure the best scalable way how to scale sales for any software. The next one, what is the best way to start cooperation with banks or large developers? How to be enough confidential for them? Uh, well, uh, for products, different stories. So, uh, the, usually the partners are selling to the banks. And, uh, how, well, this is also a nice story. We are not trying to sell uh, to banks. Why? Because they are trying to get your know-how and do everything by themselves in the final state. That's what we learned a few years ago. So if they are also asking for some services or answers, we are not going to sell them any services because we know that it's not the long-term strategy. By the way, banks usually are the biggest IT companies in the country. Also here in Slovakia. Three largest banks, you can count their people. They are much bigger than a typical software companies. They do it by themselves. We are not selling. For sure we are selling products to them. But that's the story I already described. The next one, how effective is selling of IT services and products? at the international conferences, how important it is to have a booth versus just going as attendee? Well, uh, selling IT services, we are not selling IT services, we are trying to sell products at international conferences, we are right, at international conferences. Um, Samsung is uh, now the, the most important channel for us because Samsung uh, see that the Signatus, our e signature product, is the best one in the world. So, the getting us with them on every important exhibition. Last one was FIFA in Berlin, where they bring the new Galaxy Note 8. Um, so, uh, that's the channel that uh, we are using. Uh, yeah, it works this way. So uh, we don't have our own boot. We are on the Samsung boot. Samsung is paying for that. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> we are the best one. And I think that's the advantage. If we are the best, and others are trying to uh, yeah. be in relation with you. Exclusive relation. So. How much are you personally involved in ASO? Do you think the company can survive without any of your participation? Um, well, um, would someone want to buy ASO? Right, and now, uh, well, um, yeah, but then that's a nice one. Maybe if somebody else is uh, showing the direction, I'm not, uh, I'm not important in the company anymore. If, uh, if this is my position to show the way where the answer is going, then um, yeah, it will survive some, some time. I don't know how long, but it will definitely survive. But I'm, I'm not sure in which position I will find the company after a year I'm out of. Yeah. So, uh, hopefully I build up the culture inside the company that it can survive a long time uh, without me, but I'm not sure. Okay, we have time for two last questions. Uh, what's your opinion about blockchain? Is it really revolutionary technology or is it just overpriced hype? Um, I tried to read something about blockchain from, from the above and um, I found the 
important article that is saying that 80% from 80% of all um, all uh, how to say that uh, problems, let's call it problems that blockchain is trying to solve can be solved with a obvious technology. So uh, it's definitely uh, a hype, but uh, very necessary for every product, every technology, every framework, every rational uh, revolution thing is very necessary to uh, be in a hype and then uh, to, to see the real value that the new technology can bring technology or whatever. So, uh, yeah. I, I believe that blockchain is and will be very useful for some kind of processes and worlds, call it all worlds, the documentary worlds and some, some worlds that it will be revolutionary new uh, quality of how technology can or bring the solution. Okay, the last one. How many employees are in Anasoft? Well, uh, this is the this is the easy one. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, we've got the building here uh, on the opposite side of the highway, where you see it, uh, let's say uh, 120 people or less. So we have uh, another. Uh, office in Trenching, city, uh, less than two hours drive, and we have some uh, people in Czech Republic and Germany, as I told. In the US, we almost uh, close up the operations, only one guy is still seeding and making the all necessary uh, arrangements, but uh, so together, oh well. Um, if you are asking the, of the group, because I also got several daughters companies also where we are keeping the shares. Um, starts from uh, the Alcas is the company city up there with 40 people. Up to we got some shares in Greenway, which is the electro mobility operator, in, uh, not only in Slovakia but also in other countries. So we calculate it up to let's say 200. Great, thank you. Please give a round of applause for...